Crewe, Eastleigh, Doncaster, some of the great railway towns of England, with thousands of miles of locomotives produced on thousands of miles of track, taking up extensive yards and intricately designed stations. However, one could say the greatest railway town of them all was London. As the capital of the most powerful country on the planet, it was deemed a necessity to have the most extensive railway network in the world, something that still could be argued about the city today. London, in railway terms at least, is of course well known for having the most terminus stations in the United Kingdom, with the actual definition being rather vague. Are Waterloo and Waterloo East separate termini, and what about Moorgate? Is Moorgate a tube station, or a terminal for the Northern City Line? Regardless, London definitely has no competition in terms of terminal stations, with Manchester and Liverpool following behind with four each. London too has not experienced the same levels of closures as other major UK cities have, although there certainly have been some closures over the years, the most well known of the bunch being Broad Street, which has had its services effectively reinstated as part of the London Overground, with services being rerouted towards Croydon, Crystal Palace, New Cross and Clapham Junction. Clapham Junction itself is well known for being the busiest station in the United Kingdom in terms of trains, with it serving as the convergence point of the South Western, Windsor and Brighton lines, heading towards Waterloo and Victoria respectively. However, the original plan of the railway to Victoria was not in fact to head over the Thames, but instead to terminate at a station on the south bank of the river, not too far from Chelsea Bridge. In fact, this plan came to fruition in August 1858, with the completion of Pimlico Station, quite wrongly named after the area on the opposite side of the Thames, as the terminus of a short railway running to Crystal Palace. This was the verbosely named West End of London and Crystal Palace Railway, and was built to coincide with the resighting of the Crystal Palace to Sydenham, from Hyde Park, in June 1854. The London, Brighton and South Coast Railway had already built a line to Crystal Palace from London Bridge, via New Cross, and the new West End of London and Crystal Palace Railway was built to give a route from the West End, through the London and South Western Railway in Wandsworth, and to Crystal Palace, where the line would split between the pre-existing route to London Bridge, one to Beckenham Junction and the line to Dover, and another line through Norwood Junction to Croydon. The portion of the line to Beckenham Junction was extended to Bromley Station, known today as Shortlands, in 1858, with one intermediate station at Penge, all as part of the failed Farnborough extension. At Bromley, the West End of London Railway connected directly with the East Kent Railway's line to Chatham and Dover, although the East Kent Railway never ran all the way to Pimlico itself. Interestingly, all of these railway lines exist to this day, and just goes to show how important this little railway was for the creation of railway lines in South London. The line was formally opened in March 1858, and was originally used by services to two main destinations, Brighton, of which there were nine trains daily, and to London Bridge, with a service frequency of 18 stopping and seven fast trains in each direction, and 11 all-stops trains on weekends, all of which were operated by the London and Brighton Railway. Pimlico Station itself has very little known about it. It was described in Herapath's journal, the predecessor of the Railway Gazette International, as being much admired for its spaciousness, convenient design, and economical construction, making Pimlico sound more like a temporary terminus rather than a permanent one. However, the station's opening did coincide nicely with the opening of the adjacent Chelsea Bridge a few days prior, giving a simple link for passengers to and from the real West End of London. As of 1858, Pimlico was described as being a serviceable two and a half hour journey to Portsmouth and Dover, and a respectable hour and a quarter journey to Brighton, which has not been much expanded on in modern times, with the average time taken for the Gatwick Express, the fastest Victoria to Brighton train, being only a quarter of an hour faster than what it was in 1858. However, in 1859, the London and Brighton Railway bought the West End and Crystal Palace Railway as far as Battersea, and the newly formed London Chatham and Dover Railway, formerly known as the East Kent Railway, bought the Crystal Palace to Bromley section, effectively ending the existence of the railway company. The Pimlico Terminus was closed shortly after, with the opening of the Victoria Terminus on the opposite side of the River Thames on the 1st of December 1860, with Pimlico closing the day before, meaning that the London and Chatham never ran trains to Pimlico. So ends the story of Pimlico and the West End of London and Crystal Palace Railway, the shortest lived terminus London ever had, but one of, if not the most important railway lines to be built in London, foreshadowing the construction of the numerous connections from the West End towards the South East.